Welcome to Between the Sheets, the show where we look at the stories inside the papers. And joining me today, we've got Dawn Neeson, broadcaster and columnist, and also we've got George Frost. He's founder of The Duffy Show. Welcome to you both. Great to be here, James. Thank you very Liar. much indeed. Liar. Oh, yeah, well. yes. Now, mm -hmm. let's start with Sir Peter Bottomley. He says in today's Daily Telegraph, the father of the house he is. Sir Peter Bottomley has claimed that it's really grim to live on £82,000 a year, as he's argued that MPs should be paid the same as GPs. Um, I think he's got a point. It's about time MPs were paid more. 82 grand a year, it's nothing. Well, I, I think they should all be made to live on £18,500 a year, which is actually the minimum wage. Why would you do that? Well, because then they would know what it's actually like for real people living out there. What a daft comment. Well, absolutely, but I, why not give it a try, eh? Why give it a try? Well, Surely they... you want to attract the very best and you're not going to attract the very best uh, oh, oh, if you're starting to say... On, hold on, hold on. Hey, that, peanuts. How's that going? How's that going with attracting the very best then, huh? Because you're paying huh? them 82 grand a year. Well, if it's they not go working. Off, it's yeah, not working, yes, is it? No, it's not, because if you pay them way more, you might actually get some proper talent in no, there. No, you wouldn't. Not at all. Oh, and if they reckon us lot can live on 18 grand a year, why can't they? Mm. I, I, I mm. genuinely do mm. think, you know, pay better, get better. And I think that people coming out of university should be wanting to go into politics in the same breath as wanting to go into sport, wanting to go into medicine or law. People think... going into politics should have lived a life before. I don't want career politicians. They're idiots. Right, so, but okay, so here's the point. So then why, don't we, the then why don't we not have the same pay scale? And, and so, for example, if you're coming out of a university and you want to go into politics and you become an MP, great. 82 grand is probably quite a lot of money because that's going to be a lot more than you would get paid at pretty much anything. Whereas, if you've been working a life, if you've been working for 30, 40, 50 years, else and you go into politics, maybe you should get the last average salary that you got for the last five years and that's what you get paid, whatever it is. Yeah? Yeah. Do you not care? No. To get the footballers in there. No. No, I, I can't believe Marcus, that you bankrupt you the nation. Ma Marcus Rashford do a better job. He is doing yeah, a better well, job. Well, Marcus well, Rashford has paid, paid someone. He's go. probably he's paid proved. every 2K a minute. And yes, absolutely. But he's still doing a better job, which just goes to prove that we're paying him 82 grand a year and they're still useless. But it, I know, but this is this is the point. Well, so that we've, the got, we've got a messed matter. up pay system. We've yeah, got a messed up pay system. So you could, you could go and work for the British Broadcasting Corporation and be their director general and you could be paid £550,000. You could go and be the chief executive of Channel 4 and be on nearly a million pounds, even though it's still owned by the government, kind of same job, probably easier to be the, the chief exec of Channel 4 than it is the DG of the BBC, arguably. Or you could work here and earn 50 quid. You know, choice is yours. Every appearance, A whole though, 50 quid, a whole 50 quid. Every appearance. Good luck to you but on that. But the perks are you get to work with him. Yeah. Wow. What's not to like? Wowzers. So, OK, where do you stand? MPs get paid more or less than they currently are? I think most MPs should be forced to live on the minimum wage because that's what they are okay, trying to force that nonsense. More. people to more. live on the now. More, more two versus no. one, you're outvoted. No, hold on a minute. The clue's in you're... his name, isn't it? Bottom. Bottomly. No wonder you work for the Daily Star with bottom. trash comments like that. <laughs> Let's talk about your favourite Prime Minister ever. Oh, sorry, your second favourite Prime Minister ever. <laughs> because what um, would Margaret say? Build, Boris Johnson. I'm building back with a battered beaver. I'm sorry? Or something like that. That's good. I think something like that. Alliteration in it? the nation. All, all I'm taking from the Tory party conference, apart from some very bad singing and dancing, which we'll come on to later, is beavers. Sorry. What? Beavers. Why beavers? Building. Well, this, this, I mean, look, it was a nice, optimistic speech. Didn't tell me anything, really, about well, what they were actually going to do. Um, but it's all this build back better, build back butter. We're all obese already. Why do we want to build back butter? I don't get that. Build back burger. Yes. And then, because that's something to do with the meat we're exporting to America. Did I get that one right? I think I might have dozed off at that I, point. All but of then them the classic. Are, it's horrendous. I don't know who came up with it, but I would fire them. Yes, absolutely. What's that, the, the terminology? The build back better. Build, should, b -b 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 it's just awful. I know, but I won't, I won't disclose because I actually think he's brilliant. But uh, Well, yeah. he was having, whoever it was who came up with that, having an off day. Sack them. Sorry, not worth the money. Did you, did, those... you did say sack them then, didn't yes. you? Yes. It sounded really like something else. Oh, wow. It did sound like, sorry. He'd, he'd, like, he'd certainly like one of the things you just <laughs> positioned. Wowzers. Well, you, I just quite... would get rid. It's just terrible. It was, it, was the whole, it was the whole beaver thing, though. He's quite an expert with beaver. But though, Build Back he? Better is, is, is brilliant, is it not? No. It's concise. 
From what? Well, it means nothing. Where to? Of course it does. What We've does it got mean? to build back as, a, as an economy, particularly recently, from recently, and to do it better. <sighs> but it didn't tell you how it was going to do it better. You know what, what I is... would try and do better? Come up with better phrases. Better. Well, I'm not here and paid to do that. How about... Uh, <laughs> not paid to talk sense. What, 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 what is... All right, then, George. What does levelling up mean? That's what I know. What is levelling up to what? What level? I think... Well, you know, I think he's committed to... He should be. ..to levelling up across the nation in terms of opportunities, in terms of services, in terms of cities. I like what he said about why, why should people have to come to London, leave their loved ones, leave their... That sounded very... Because it's one of the uh, greatest cities in grand. the world. As soon yes, as you but start... Yes, but why can't other cities become better? Well, they Doncaster, are. They're great. great and cities. yes, they should have... But this whole idea that you don't build up your capital city is a nonsense. The French have been trying it for years and it fails. It's a failed politics. But what London will doing, never lose its gloss. It will lose its no, gloss. It if you allow Sadiq Useless to continue with his trashing of London, then you're going to end up with a city that can't move can't travel no. and True. can't operate True. because he is making a mess of it. And he's making a mess of it for his own political uh, gains and benefits. Well, and I'm Sadiq, sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a useless endeavour. Sadiq, Sadiq Khan not. Sadiq uh, can't, I know. Is, oh. is, a, is a totally appalling mayor. And as you said, Boris Johnson may not have said exactly how he's going to build back no, better, but that's better vague. than Sadiq Khan saying he'll freeze uh, uh, fees of the, you know, of London Underground when he comes in and immediately putting them up. Prom making false promises is a million times worse, no, he said better, than promising something and totally undelivering. But, so I, mean, I just said the same thing. Uh, well, we are a very green it's city now. Not oh, promising. Stop Sorry. Hand. We Sorry. are a very green city now in London, aren't we? You can't drive anywhere. And there's your Sadiq Khan, in which state you take a convoy of gas guzzling cars to walk your dog. Oh, I think we should just make Britain great again. There you go. Now, there we go. Great Britain. God, can we say that anymore? I didn't think we could use, we could refer to ourselves it. as great. Now. The French think we're great, Britain. don't they? They really don't. Mm. Um, Prime Minister hit by business backlash, George. You invented a rum brand, the so Duppy Share. Which, which, which you, you've brought in loads of salt. Another, Another time. Oh, um, yeah, it's only time. because you're here and we next shouldn't time. allow you to be let loose with alcohol. You can. But yes. Business backlash. Is Boris doing enough for business, small and large? I think that, you know, there, there's been rumours that some of the fantastic... Uh, policies in place to promote small business are going to be pulled back. But up until that happens, I think they're doing phenomenal things. And in terms of the backlash, in terms of the lack of resources, we've been phenomenally uh, fortunate in that people have been desperate to work for us, that, that you young employees are the future, naturally, of company companies and I don't think there's any dearth of talent out there and any any job that we need any role that we need to fill we are you filling them we are filling them so you don't have any staffing shortages absolutely not if anything we got too bloody many of them wow well, yeah, well that's good because everywhere else seems to have staff shortages and the mirror today have a lovely picture of a pig on page one. Oh, do they and Boris Johnson tackling but, yeah. the thing yeah, I mean who's going to bring home the bacon listen, can I just oh, I, you know what boom, I want boom. to do so this is today's daily mirror where they talk about censor slaughter on the front page there um, I want to save you some money Dawn go on so what I'm going to do there's nothing in the mirror today no there's pigs it's crap there's pigs I'm, no because I'm sorry there's nothing in the mirror today because we have do some journalism stop wasting people's money you keep complaining about everything and they say that your bills are going to go up by £700 or something every other news Newspaper says four hundred pounds. Do your math. Chuck maths. it in the air. Chuck it in the air. Confetti. No, we're just we, drop it down. Uh, no, we're we not allowed to do, to do that, that anymore. No, 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 no. no, no. no. It's a, it's However, a shiny new set. Project. Project Fear is alive and well. I'm I hasn't don't want to stopped, talk, has it? I don't want to talk about the mirror because it's a waste of time, effort and but money. But they've got cute piggies. No, no, nobody cares. But we, we're killing them all. Good. Because we've got cares. a shortage of, of butchers. Nobody cares. Hey, can you give me that, please? Got pig. Will you rip it up then? I don't. Come on then. We don't need the mirror. It's rubbish. I love it when it's forceful. So, some of Britain's favourite wines are due to disappear from the shelves. This is not a Brexit story, by the way. They're from New Zealand. This is a worldwide crisis. I don't understand. Project Fear, left, right and centre. Everybody keeps going on about, oh, you know, our supply problems to do with Brexit. They're not. No, no, it's like lorry drivers. That's nothing to do with Brexit either. No, it's Which not. Which it isn't. I agree. None of it is. No, it is. None of it is. If anything, Why we're in a better position than other European countries. Correct. 
So mm-hmm. when are we going to see the stories that actually indicate that, that indicate that maybe we are better off? And in fact, what we should be doing as a nation is looking at our staff, looking at our talent, looking at our abilities and saying, right, we are now going to move forward. And by the way, you people, all of us, when we do well, We'll keep the money, we'll keep the prosperity, and we'll keep it I, here. I want to be levelled up to eight L grand a year, to be honest with you. That, that'd that help. James will, James will subsidise. Yeah, because he's, the, yeah, the, the he's moment, very rich. The, the moment that newspapers specialise in good news is the moment that this culture of ours and society of ours is made as good as it can be. That was almost profound, and I would expect as good as it from can the be. son of the person who invented the news review. Well, I mean, I feel yeah. as if I'm in the, in the presence of greatness. Well, you are. Well, thank Almost. you. Oh, you mean him? Oh. You are, yeah. Mm. A for sale sign hangs over Britain, says Margaret Hodge. What do you make of this article in today's Guardian, where she talks about the Pandora Papers? Uh, you know what? I don't give a damn. I really don't give a damn about their Pandora Papers. Rich people use tax loopholes. Huh. Who knew? Yeah. Not Do you want to stop them going through the loopholes, close the loopholes? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tony Blair said, I'm going to close so the loopholes. He didn't close the loopholes. He used one of the loopholes he didn't close to well, save himself. I mean, I mean, and I don't care that he does, by the way, because well, it's perfectly legal. It was sherry, wasn't it? I mean... Sherry. Mm-hmm. Oh, Sherry. Sherry. A dad was from Liverpool. Yeah, sherry. Shares. Sherry, isn't it? Shares. Shares. I mean, the thing is that people like Margaret Hodge just go on and on and on about this. Oh, and and the thing is that they're having a salacious look into people's private affairs. It's none of your or my business what people own and how much they have and all this stuff. It's interesting. Are you having a salacious affair then? No, Mm. they were. I just wish I knew what salacious meant. Solace? Something like solace? Tell us. Salacious. You can't. can't. It's like like juicy, it's like Mm. gory, it's like all the gory and juicy details. Yeah. And why not but use juicy? somewhat unnecessary too. Right. So salacious, so it's juicy and unnecessary at the same time. A bit like you then. Oh, for God's sake. Do you, George, let's get... This is just a story for you, George. Let's talk about education. It's in today's mail. Well, uh, yeah, I like this one, which is um, can't spell, don't worry, you can still get a frost. Uh, oh, good yeah. news! Good news for my wife, because she really can't spell. Yes. Um, and she's managed to get a frost. A, a frost. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, but but no, in, it, seriously, uh, I'm not going to be serious about the newspaper, but it's but me somebody, getting a magician so, right, that was I'm the magic of this. Dyslexic dyspraxic, so I find spelling very hard. Yep. But I do, and I did have to work hard in order to make sure that when I was writing and doing my exams and everything else, that you get it right, because you get marked down if you don't get the spelling and the not grammar anymore. and the intonation and not all that. Not anymore. Uh, not anymore. But I, this is, this is, they say it's about inclusivity. It's not inclusive encouraging people to be thick. No, well, that's all it's doing, isn't it? I mean, it's, uh, the, the, the basic story is that university now are saying that it doesn't matter if you can't spell or punctuate or string a sentence together, you're not going to lose marks in your exams. But, it's like, oh, but it's surely dumb. what's it's the like, point oh. in going to university is to educate people? But they're saying it's it's inclusive and diversity. I mean, it was it was slightly sort of connected to Boris Johnson what? making that joke about people in Islington and they couldn't win or they wouldn't yeah, allow yeah, to yeah, run yeah. away and then yeah. win it. And and this is the same point, isn't it, about education? Which is if you don't encourage and tell people this is what you have to do in order to succeed, then you take away all necessity to be good at what you do. Yeah, bit of competition. I As think. opposed to oh, you can have the job because you're uh, a certain age, a certain colour, a certain race, a certain, certain orientation. Sexuality. Have all of that. And by the way. Oh, it doesn't matter if you can't do the job. Yeah, yeah. But but it's of course. I mean, you know, get your point completely. Uh, and obviously, university and and job and and many ways, the economy should be meritocratic. But is, you know, that. is is spelling the most important thing? Yes. Yes. Or is it a sign, perhaps, that universities and schools, I feel, very much focus on the wrong things? James, in the uh, interlude to this or before this. We were talking about uh, universities. Yes. And we were talking about, I can't remember what we were talking about. Because I went to university. I didn't. Yeah. I can remember. So should we just have a university chat? You were talking about the fact that you went to Newcastle. That apparently is up north. The Oxford of the north, I'll have you know. But yes, and that, that leads me on what, seamlessly. You can, you can buy your way in. So it's almost like it's no, rehearsed, isn't it? You couldn't no. back then. Oh, it was um, 2E entry. And you were yeah. doing economics, weren't you? Oh, thank you very much. I was. Yes, I remember. Not I remember well. the conversation. Yeah, not mm. very well. Yeah. Knew what two for one in the local bar meant, though, didn't I? 
well, everybody does who goes to university. Yeah. Um, but no, this is a story about uh, Saudi billions will breathe life into decaying Newcastle. And it's been linked with, naturally, they didn't focus on this because they want to focus on the whole thing that it's from Saudi uh, But should billions. we be concerned where money comes from? So say, for example, if a Saudi or if somebody from elsewhere wants to buy a football club or a building or anything else, should we be opening our arms and saying, look, if you want to come to the UK, I, everything's for sale? Because Margaret Hodge in the, in the Guardian thinks it's terrible. Well, I think... We're it, all for sale. I think it's... Absolutely, you know, create a great product, people are going to want it. And they, they've got a breakdown here. I think, obviously, human rights backlash, there will be one, but it's a slippery slope, you know? It's a, if we've got a free market and someone builds an incredible brand, which Newcastle is, then who are we to say, no, it can't go here, you can't sell, you can't make a they success of your business. They to sell to whoever they want. Why do we get so upset, though, when a, when a... I mean, I suppose football fans are fickle people, that as soon as a club is sold, if they're going to pump all the money and buy all yeah. the players, then suddenly they don't care and who owns it. And support English grassroots football. And, and I well, think what's crucial... Well, that's the important point, yeah. And what's crucial here is that, you know, if we want English people buying football clubs, let's focus on enabling English people to acquire enough money to buy, or English businesses, to buy football clubs. And all I will say is if Jamie Rubin, who's involved in this, is as good as playing off the pitch as he is on it, yes. Newcastle are in incredibly safe They're a very big club, aren't they, Newcastle? They are, and no, they've got they've an never and, really and, achieved. Do you like, so do you like, Geordies do you are like just football? love football. And who's your team of choice? Arsenal, come on. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Colleague, could be worse. You, you, you're worse because you're West Ham. We are owned by uh, English people. West Ham yeah. is a great Pro club. Probably I mean, for very good reason. You know, yeah. yeah. Uh, not going down that road. Legends in the porn industry. Wow. Who is it? West Ham, American, Welsh the, uh, By and the English. way, legends in the porn industry. You're talking about the owners of West Ham, not me, OK? No. <laughs> no, no. I'm not a are legend you a, yet. <laughs> are you a legend in the porn industry? <laughs> wow. Who, anything's who possible, that anything's that possible these days. Supplemented the, uh, <laughs> supplemented the income. Now, did you realise that according to uh, today's Guardian newspaper, which really has an absolute You plethora, read that. You've read that. You've got two stories in there, yeah. I know. I feel Gosh. slightly sick. It's all right. I'll deal with the Guardian in a customary way in a moment. The climate crisis is taking a growing toll on the mental health of children and young people. This is only because people are stirring it up. Like the Guardian, you mean, which yes. you're reading. It's, you it's only the... become a thing because People are making it a thing. You and the BBC. Oh, the world is burning, the BBC. Oh, it's all going to end, you know. Oh, uh, something flooded. Yes, we've had floods. I mean, Noah's Ark was uh, happened because of a flood. We weather events happen. And yeah. that was ages ago. And Exactly. So it was quite a long time ago. But Maybe it's, it's, it's global it's, cooling. It's, yeah, what happened to global warming? No. Nah. Because it's no, gone from see, it's global warming change. to climate, climate, change. climate change. Because they realised it wasn't actually warming. We don't want warming. to affect it's or insult no. any gla globes. No, no, no. But, I mean, it's, it's project fear all over, isn't it? No matter what you're talking about now, it's stay behind your sofas, you're killer granny, stay home, don't go out. Um, but, obviously, I have a story here that links in with this. This is in the Daily Mail. Oh, yeah. Which I don't think is a great favour today in particular. But this is about the stress levels that we were all enduring during the lockdown, during the pandemic. Um, but ever Evidently, it wasn't just us. It was our pets as well. Oh, so, I... yeah, I mean, the Daily Mail have gone to several very nice-looking middle-aged ladies to ask them how their pussies fared during the pandemic. Wow. And this one went bald, so she ends up with a bald pussy. And that one actually developed her um, cystitis. I'm so because... excited that you have turned into our very own Mrs Slocum. <laughs> Meanwhile, Daily, Daily Mail, it's poor today. Boring. It is sorry, boring. there's nothing in it. Got the strength. There's nothing it's in it. Big that mail today. I'm, I'm sorry, ATP. The mirror costs more than the mail. I know. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Well. oh, you're god. tearing it up as well. I can do that but you well. went from the easier side. So did he? Actually, there's a magic trick where so you can he. tear up the a, the yellow pages, and it's all about just opening this side first. So yeah. you're just okay, tearing. Whatever. But the yellow pages should be difficult now. Do some research. Write some good stuff. He's not allowed. He's been told off for doing that. Now, meanwhile, Childish. whilst all the young people are getting all eco, guess what? Britons throw away 170 million portions of apples, oranges and other fruit a week. What really frustrates me is that our lovely millennials, Zedders, Z Zoomers, whatever, <laughs> Zoomers and Boomers, uh, they all do one thing 
and say another. Yes. So they drink out of plastic bottles, yep. but they tell us that we've got to do this or yep. that. They tell us that we mustn't throw stuff away, but then they throw away their rubbish, they leave their litter, they throw away food, they don't, they're don't. they wasteful, um, they do all their weird behaviour. I mean, the whole thing, and they order, I mean, for example, ordering a single croissant delivery left a bad taste. You shouldn't be allowed to it's, order a single it's, croissant. It, it's like it's the, a waste. It, 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 you it, can't be bothered to get off their fat rear ends, and then they order everything on an app, and then it's no wonder that they're killing the planet. And then they get, oh, we're so it's anxious the about that. You know, we're about everything. Is they're anxious my, about my, it. My mate's got two teenage daughters, and they're always going on the Extinction Rebellion march. It's not insulate Britain, by the way. Extinction Britain. And then they, they went on one, you know, last year when they had a pink boat or whatever they name. And uh, she, they got tired coming home, right? Two teenage girls, fit teenage girls. They phoned their mum up. Mum, can you come pick us up? Mum drives a gas guzzling Range Rover. Mum had to go and pick them up. Girls, fine with that. No problem at all with that. And then they wanted to stop on the way home in McDonald's, <laughs> well, which are destroying the planet single-handedly. Well, so Supposedly, the... McDonald's are a lot better than most. The double yes. Big Mac is back. Exactly. Yeah. And they do say that you don't only really find Big Stan. Macs at McDonald's. Oh. Ba-boom. I, no. I, I think we should do as they say, not as they do, because I feel we can learn a huge amount from younger generations. Meanwhile, tackling inequality is very important. And uh, Ghislaine has been writing here in the uh, the I Ein thought newspaper. she'd be busy, Ghislaine. Well, I think, no, not that different Ghislaine. <laughs> different, this is a different She's Ghislaine. got a lot of time in so, around yeah, well, that's true. True. To tackle these inequalities, she said, so this is about uh, following Black Lives Matter protests, organisations after organisation. They're not doing enough, apparently, to tackle racism. Um, but, of course, as soon as you pick out something and say, well, I don't really agree with this or that, then uh, you, you are racist in doing so. Anyway, to tackle these inequalities that she finds is not uh, through unbiased, conscious, no, unconscious bias training. You can't read, get, can I can't read. read. Oh, no, uh, which yeah. Kate all in his white ear. egos. What? Perhaps we should stop uh, expecting organisations to solve a problem that they have vested interest in manipulating and maintaining and reclaim the power ourselves. This is all about power. When we talk about equality, what we're really talking about is not about equality. We're talking about power shifting from one load of people to another. Because say, for example, you can only have one job. What they're saying is, that job isn't mine, I want it. Mm -hmm. And this is why this whole discussion about equality... Oh, I don't care. A lot of the eye just does it. There it's you go. It's gone. Oh, it's gone. But I've got... I've got a Sorry, the eye paper, but I mean, it's boring. What do you want? I, Dad, can I talk, please? Yeah. I've got... If I'm your dad, then something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Genetic, so many different bad. ways. Genetic experiments. In so many different ways. <laughs> I've got a political... I'm a dad, and my let daughter is older than me. <laughs> Just let me talk. Stop mansplaining things. Me. Any case, I've got a food story as well, and it's a politically oh, correct story. And this is from The Times. And right. this one is at Bake Off. Do you, do you like a bit of Spotted Dick? I do like a bit of Bake Off. <laughs> yeah. Um, you were very so careful boring. on there. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a problem about biscuits, it has, it biscuits has for an dull. hour. I mean, you, you know that it's the same old formula rattled out again. Yeah. It's just boring. They, they replicate the things, they replicate the show year on year. Yes. And yeah. yet they want new people to watch it. Yeah. You can't have your cake and eat it. Oh. Oh. Any case, some of them got nice bats no this those. year. No more and look, of those. But, but they've gone out of their way to be... Politically correct. They tick all the boxes now with, with race, um, religion, gender identity, oh, sexuality. Every box is ticked right. They even had an old white woman on there the other year. I was completely shocked. And they've got a posh person. A, a posh person? Yes. Oh, my God. I didn't know. I know. That, that slipped through the net. But this time, right, they thought they'd get the vegans involved. Oh, So dear. they've got this gorgeous little girl on there who is called Freya Cox. She's 19. And she's a vegan. So they thought, hey, we're politically correct, let's hire a vegan. And then they force her to do her, what is it, a bread thing that she was making or a cake, um, using animal products. Let's turn our attention to our video of the week. Ooh, I like it's this It's been bit. the Tory party oh, you're not conference. Using that one. No, okay. Theresa Coffey. So she just announced that they're taking away, as Work and Pensions Minister, they're taking away the £20 a week uh, uplift that was given during the pandemic. Yeah, it was temporary. There's the call. And then she's singing, I've had the time of my life very, very badly, <laughs> out of tune and dancing terribly. Oh, it's gone viral. <laughs> you make of it? Uh, yeah, I mean, politicians shouldn't dance or sing, should they? I mean, Boris, one of Boris's many jokes in his speech was about our um, John Bon Govi 
just go for dancing yeah. in the nightclub. What to be? They're yeah. all just bad. But I mean, we've we've all been saying that news has to be bad. Why? And you know, she's got a bit of character. Yes. People often say politicians are out of tune with society. Oh. Why, why can't she have a have a bit of fun in the evening? I mean, it's totally ridiculous that that's a news story. I do, but it's totally it's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's angered the that, woke that, brigade. But they're doing How? The why? How? Because you're starving people. You're taking 20 quid away from them and it's not fair. And Making she's a, a song Tory, and dance about having it. Having the time of their life. And they've just been having the time of their life, having probably had a whole bucket load of fizz as well. at somebody else's expense. These politicians, they're all on the take, aren't they? They might pay but their own way. But they don't need way. to be. They're on 80 old grand a year, aren't they? Whereas That's nothing. They expect us to survive on 18 and a half. Yeah, well, Try it. As, as if, as a national newspaper editor, you were on less than that. Oh, on that bombshell. No, I work for Richard Desmond on that bombshell. <laughs> oh. Go figure. <laughs> oh, and she's still alive. Hi, Richard. OK. Thanks very much indeed to my guests, to George Frost. Thank you very much. Share. You can find the wonderful alcoholic beverages there. And, and you can find them at Tesco as of very recently. And you can't. The supermarkets are, are available. Not for and, our and Duffy you, White, uh, they're not And you yet. can't find them in the studio because you didn't bring any samples in. Well, they're on yeah. route to you both now. And thank you very much indeed to Dawn Neeson, broadcaster and columnist. Well done to you both. We will leave you with what can only be described as an absolute abomination. Teresa Coffey dancing and singing on the conservative dance floor. Until next time, cheerio.